In a previous video, we introduced the reaction of an alkene with hydrogen bromide. The resulting products were the addition of the hydrogen bromide across the sp2 hybrid carbons to replace the pi bond. In that situation, we had a symmetric alkene such that it did not matter which of the sp2 carbons received the hydrogen and which one received the bromine. If one went to one and the bromine went to the other, or vice versa, it didn't really matter because we ended up with the same product. What would happen if we had an asymmetric alkene reacting with the hydrogen bromide? In this example, we'll have two methyl groups off of one of the sp2 carbons and two hydrogens bonded to the other sp2 carbon. In this case, we can get two different products depending on whether the hydrogen bonds to the carbon with the methyl groups or the hydrogen bonds to the carbon with the two hydrogens. In fact, when we carry out this reaction in the lab, we only get one product, and that's the one with the hydrogen bonded to the sp2 carbon that already has two hydrogens attached. Let's look back at that mechanism for an alkene reaction involving hydrogen bromide. As part of that reaction mechanism, we saw that a carbocation was formed. If we look at the two possible carbocations that could be formed with this asymmetric alkene, we'll see a difference. We can look at the carbocations and we can classify the carbocations the same way we classified alcohols. In this first carbocation, we see that the carbon with a positive charge is bonded to three other carbons. This is called a tertiary carbocation. The other carbocation has the carbon with two hydrogens and a positive charge attached to only one other carbon. This is a primary carbocation. In terms of stability, we learn that a tertiary carbocation is more stable than a secondary carbocation which is in turn more stable than a primary carbocation, and that in turn is more stable than a methyl carbocation. The reason for this stability is due to the carbon groups attached to the carbon ca carbocation being able to donate electron density to stabilize the positive charge. Because of this order of stability, reactions like this will favor one constitutional isomer over another. These types of reactions are called regioselective reactions. We also have a general rule we can apply when we have an addition across a double bond. That rule is known as Markovnikov's rule. This says that in an alkene addition reaction, the hydrogen ion adds to the sp2 carbon that has the most hydrogens already bonded to it. Now that we've seen that hydrogen halides could be added across a double bond, let's see what else can be added to an alkene. We might want to add water across an alkene. However, when we add water to alkenes, we actually get no reaction. The reason for this is that water is not a strong enough electrophile we need something with a positive charge that would be a stronger electrophile. We can still get water to add across the double bond if we make it enter a hydronium ion first. We can do this by adding a strong acid like sulfuric acid to water. This will produce the hydronium ion and the hydronium ion with a positive charge is a much stronger electrophile. When we do this, the alkene can react with the hydronium so that the pi bond will donate its electrons to one of the hydrogens on hydronium. That bonding pair between the hydrogen and the oxygen on hydronium will be donated to the oxygen to form water. We still get a carbocation formed once the hydrogen has been added to the sp2 carbon that already had the most hydrogens. This carbocation will then react with the water 
and one of the lone pairs on the oxygen in the water will be donated to form a bond to the carbocation. This forms a protonated alcohol, and you should recall from previous videos that protonated alcohols are reasonably acidic. If we have another water molecule present, one of the lone pairs on the oxygen in the water can be donated to form a bond to one of the hydrogens on the protonated alcohol, and that bonding pair between the hydrogen and oxygen can be donated to the oxygen, and the product we get is going to be an alcohol. We can do a similar kind of reaction with alcohols instead of water. As with water, we need an acid catalyst to make a protonated alcohol first before it will react with the alkene. When we do this, the product we get is an ether instead of an alcohol.